Now, we're getting into the drama, the cast of drama, because, listen, I've worked, like, maybe one major where there wasn't cast of drama. I mean, listen, let's just take a quick sidebar before we get into the meat and drink of this particular drama. Let's just talk about casters in general. They're mad, aren't they? They're all mental, right? Like, listen, I, I, I keep it real. There's this weird fucked up attitude among casters that at any given time, old caster duos in particular always think they're sort of the best. Or certainly when they're on top and they're the most popular, that's what they believe. Going into an event, the expectation is always that the best duo will do the finals, the prestigious games. And so if there's any deviation from that, toys get thrown out the fucking pram. And I've seen some unbelievable levels of bickering and fighting and it's really childishness and like negativity and broken friendships all just predicated on this stuff now coming into this event what was great about the two weeks we had in romania everything was fine there was none of that there was no ego we all knew it was going to be a tough show we all knew you know fuck all the old boys are back together some of us it's our last ride let's try and make it work and just do a good show and no drama and no bullshit no flare-ups and we were all like we're all very different people now we've all matured a lot you know especially those of us who've spent some time outside of the freelancing circle and as i said on twitter you know i saw this major as a gift anyway there was no way i was going to create any drama or be involved in any drama because i didn't even ex I, I shouldn't have been there you know, I shouldn't have been hosting the damn thing in the first place. Oh, yeah. And obviously, all drama is turbocharged by the fact none of us get any sleep. <laughs> That's a, Well, casters actually get sleep. The host sleep pattern is always the worst because you have to be first one in, last one out. You open the show, you close the show, you sit around watching all of the games in between, planning your segments. There's no rest for you. Uh, casters, if you're doing an afternoon game, you sleep into the afternoon. You're doing an evening game, you know, you, you come in in the evening. You do a morning game, you do your game and you leave. So casters get it better, right? That's just also the reality. But I would also argue, yeah, we go back and forth on this. I think casters is a maybe a higher pressure job than being the host because people won't come back and watch my hosting segments. People will go back and watch a game. And if you have a shit performance in a game and you ruin the game, a lot of fans will fuck you up about that. So they're probably under more pressure than a, than a host in general. So caster drama is always a given pretty much in every esport I've ever been in. Certainly back in StarCraft, it was crazy. It was a lot more cutthroat and fucked up than, than CSGO. But CSGO is kind of like a middle of the pack compared to scenes where no one cared, like Call of Duty 4, which was wicked. And people were just like, I'm not, I'm not going to cast the final so I can drink more. You know, that was, that was the attitude. So there's always, there's always caster drama, right? Always. But I wasn't expecting any this time. But this is the first event I've been at where a caster has been essentially deported <laughs> in the middle of a tournament. Like, just gone. See ya. We're just getting updates on WhatsApp coming through from Sado. Yeah, my charm's not working. I'm off, guys. They're putting me on a plane. There's armed guards. I'm on a plane. I'm like, this. this none of this can't be real, for fuck's sake. But that's essentially, like, what happened, right? So, as I said, by the time we touched down... Because remember... We only knew as we were getting on the plane. We didn't know if there was going to be a compromise. We didn't know if he could fly back to Romania. We didn't know if he was going to have to fly back to Canada. We didn't know if he was going to go to Canada, get go to the embassy, get it resolved, and fly out the next day. That was even talked about. Like, Sado was saying, listen, I'll come back, like, because he's just crazy like that and wanted to do the event. We get down, we, we, we touch down, and we are told, like, listen, we're all furiously WhatsApping, like, Let's work this out. Let's have a talk about the schedule. Now, to the specifics of the drama. And this is a tough thing to talk about because uh, I have never had an issue with, with uh, James Bardolf at all. And in fact, he stood up for me. If you remember the famous Hell in a Cell incident, DreamHack were trying to pull me off the broadcast. It was James Bardolf who said, this is a face it broadcast and Richard is finishing and closing our show. I've never had any personal issues with him at all. I've never had any arguments with him at all. I uh, generally think he's a good guy. But what he did at this event was the most diva shit I've ever seen at any esports event ever. Also left out a few crucial details in his version that he put out publicly. Basically what happened was 
the original schedule, uh, it was Anders and Semler and Moses and Sado doing the semis and Chad uh, and Alex doing the final. That was the original schedule, right? So James and DDK didn't get a semi-final. Now, I also didn't say anything before the event because it would be really unprofessional and not cool, but also real talk. James and DDK have done, like, I think two of two CSGO events, both of them summits, in the last 18 months. They shouldn't have been at the major. I mean, that's that's the end of that. I get it's a throwback major, and I shouldn't have been at the major. Fine, I accept that. If I hadn't have been at the major, you wouldn't have heard a single peep out of me. But just to put it into context, two events in 18 months, and we fuck over Harry and Hugo and Launders and Scrawny by not having them there. Nah, that that sucks and it wasn't fair and i'm not i'm not two-faced i told the guys to their face like sort of at the event you know in a, in a lesser robust way than that i just said listen i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie you know i don't I, I, if it was down to me i would have hired different casters but it isn't it's good to see you again you know whatever you know i think dan in particular started out not great we all saw the sheriff clip right we start he started out not great uh because he's been doing a lot of valorant and it is a it is a different game in many ways and um, he got better and you saw flashes of the old ddk and 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 james at the event and that's great right but anyway just keep in mind that was the original schedule james and ddk got a quarterfinal and the show match, which, by the way, I think the show match is absolutely perfect for the comedy style of, like, DDK and James. They're great with a crowd, and obviously, sometimes the crowd is a little bit low energy waiting for the final in the show match. So, I didn't see that as a problem. Spoiler, all casters hate doing, doing the show match and actually consider doing the show match an insult. Didn't know that. Found that out <laughs> this event. Yeah, I know, right? crazy eh because for me i did the show match at boston with henry and that's like one of the coolest moments in my career i guess i'm just a cretin who knew pgl panicked when sado wasn't coming and didn't wait for us because to be fair to pgl because i'm always fair they had been sort of told we need the schedule as soon as possible so we can prep for our games by the casters and the analysts and so they rushed out a revised schedule Slight problem, in this revised schedule, Moses got one quarterfinal, the Virtus Pro quarterfinal, and didn't do another game the entire event. So everyone else got two or three games, baby Moses got one, and arguably probably the worst game of the bunch. And now, James and DDK were in the semis, and James and DDK are doing the show match, and they got the Vitality Na'Vi quarterfinal as well. So, a really good quarterfinal, a semi-final, and the show match. When James says publicly that a semi-final got took away from him, not true, because he never had a semi-final in the first place. In the second revised schedule, which was essentially a clerical error, and it should never have been sent out to the group because no one had agreed shit, PGL just rushed it, he did have a semi-final. Anyway, now, a lot of people were like, why is Moses getting fucked over and only getting one game? Because Sado isn't there. And I, I agree with that, by the way. And I also agree that Moses is a better caster on a technical level, which is irrelevant. And my opinion on that is irrelevant. But just so we're all transparent, that's where I'm at mentally. And I also agree people who are actively working CSGO events should be getting more at a major because isn't that what a major is about? Also, just point of information, during the major... James Bardolf was casting that Apex tournament PGL were running at the same time. So, you know. Now, there is politics in broadcast groups and hiring decisions and all of this. And obviously, Moses Anders and Semler are all pals. I'm try I try and be pals with everybody, you know. But also, analysts uh, were, uh, are pals with, with those guys. Maniac's like just a neutral guy. He's kind of new with all what a baptism of fire it was for him. Blair is obviously new as well. But generally, the group felt it wasn't fair on Moses. So, the group got together and said, that schedule's whack. Why don't we keep it so DDK and James do a quarterfinal and the show match. And we give Moses and Anders 
a semi-final. So Anders ends up doing both semis, but we just essentially replace Anders for Sadakist. And then I think we then came up with the idea of, oh, for the first quarterfinal Moses does, we'll let him do it with Semler, and then that way it evens out the number of games. Nobody gets more than three games at the major under this schedule. Chad and uh, Alex got two, but one of them was the final. We were trying to spread it out as much as possible. The group agrees that's the way we're going to do it, and they say, listen... We should tell PGL to revise the schedule. Now, all of this has happened in about two, maybe three hours. So keep in mind, by the way, everyone understands why James is angry. We just don't understand the degree that it got to. So for those three hours, James thinks he's going to do a semi with, with Dan. Me being me, I'm sat with the guys and I'm going, listen, I can help with this. I keep in mind by this point... PGL weren't particularly happy that the casters couldn't play nice and disagreed with the schedule. In other words, they don't know Moses. They do know James and DDK. They were much happier to fuck over Moses than they were to take something away from James and DDK. This is what I mean about politics, guys. It's silly. So I said, why don't I see if I can smooth all this over? And I'll go to PGL and explain our position. And the group went, yes, Richard, you're very good at talking. And you know everyone, and you're the old man. And I went, all right, cool. I will be dad at this event. I will be dad. So dad went to talk to all of the PGL guys and explain why we wanted to change the roster, uh, the schedule rather. And they said, listen, we'll do it. <laughs> Don't even know why this would ever happen to me. We will do it, we agree, but you have to go and break the news to Dan and James. You... Richard Lewis, who doesn't work for PGL. Lucky me. I'm like, okay, I suppose I will do that. Just <laughs> because, you know, it's it's how we get it, in, in my mind, fixed, right? And listen, I can't speak to everyone's motivations, but the reason I was on board with the fix was that I didn't think, Dan and James have been on their A game until later on in the tournament. I also think the optics of having a, a full-time Valorant caster casting a semi-final of a CSGO major is fucked up. I said to people, like, don't even say the V word on the event because I don't think that's very cool. I didn't. Duncan did, of course. And Moses has been active throughout the year. So, you know, it just, it, it just made, you know, I, I just thought it was a better show for the fans. I mean, because that's all I give a fuck about. I don't really care about any of this nonsense. I don't even work events. But as I said, before I went to the major, this major's got to be the most important major. It's We've got to break records. It's got to be a really smooth broadcast. It's got to really showcase everything great about the game. It's got to have compelling storylines because we are facing an existential crisis for the future of our game. So I just thought this will be a better show. It's not, a, it's not an indictment on Dan. It's not an indictment on James who've contributed so much to CSGO history. But for this show, at this time, I was sort of in agreement with the rest of the group. So I got to tell James, first of all, I message him and say I'm coming. And then I forget I'm in this massive, like, two-tower hotel building. Takes me ages to get there. And obviously, he probably knows what's going on. So I get to him and I just say, like, listen, the group's talked to PGL. And now it's going to be Moses and Anders that do the semi-final. I won't get into the details of what was said. It wasn't very nice, you know. I tried to be, uh, you know, as understanding and as neutral as, as possible. But, you know, it. no one likes being told, essentially, I'm taking something away, that you think you have away from you, irrespective of the reasons. He basically told me to fuck off after I said, because he said, listen, I'll believe it when I hear it from PGL. And I said, PGL are the ones who sent me. And at that point, it was just like, you know, you can fuck off. And I was like, okay, fair. There's a drink for you at the bar. I'm sorry. Bought him a drink. Uh, left it there, right? And thought we would still all be professionals and we would all get through the event. Now, obviously, I'm I'm leaving out loads of other little bits and pieces, which I'm sure Duncan will all bring up anyway. But I didn't think this was a catastrophic moment at the event in terms of the drama fallout. I thought we would be pissed off in the short term, but we would just ace the job and then, you know, maybe we laugh about it six to 12 months down the line. Maybe we never talk to each other again. 
whatever. But the event would be structurally intact. So we all did it. We all agreed that was how it was going to be. And then it gets round to, obviously, the game James and DDK did. And basically, unbeknownst to anyone, including DDK, James had told PGL, stick the show match up your ass. I'm not doing it. And then obviously set up that tweet about the old boys club, which meant all of us. And a lot of people were like speculating because he said Richard Lewis in the old boys club. I don't know if he purpose purposefully left me out and made a point of distinguishing me because at least I'd gone to his face and told him. So I don't know how he feels about me. We're probably never going to talk again in all honesty because I thought this was a really lousy thing to do. And I think DDK knew about the tweet and he said, I I'd rather you didn't tweet you know i think he said i'm gonna tweet this and dan said something like i'd rather you didn't i don't want any drama and then obviously i don't think dan knew he was gonna throw back to us like that so you probably can see it on my face i'm like oh here we fucking go ah yes the old boys and i knew in that moment what was happening there so obviously we get that out the way we come off the show james is already saying goodbye to everybody He's leaving the country on the next plane. So all the people he wants to talk to in the green room, he's like, yeah, bye, 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 bye. Doesn't come say goodbye to any of us. And he's out. He's back at the hotel and flying out in the morning. Then, obviously, there's more follow-up tweets from James where he, he says, like, we fucked him out of the semi-final. We took it away from him. We were blackmailing PGL or whatever. It's not what happened. It's not how it went down. He shouldn't have had the semi. That was the original schedule. The Sadakist incident made PGL panic and change the schedule. They felt a duo would be better. There's no nice way of framing it. It was just a tantrum, essentially. I, I would have even said, if someone tells you to stick a show match up your ass and you let them on your broadcast to begin with, eh, I don't know. I don't like bringing bullshit into the broadcast I, I, because the broadcast lives forever. I've said this a number of times. I, I just think it's the cardinal sin because now... That VOD lives forever. People are going to come back and watch the VOD. They might see that. They're going to, oh, what's all that about? The drama is now part of the show. It lives forever attached to the show like a barnacle on the side of a ship. And I don't like that. I don't think that's, um, I don't think that's very cool because, you know, it should be about the games and it should be about the players and it should be about the fans. I'll let you off one 